Good morning, everyone. Today we are talking, uh, going to talk about a beautiful mechanism by which the eyes are uh, continuously moved and focused and, and centralized and uh, for anything. Uh, first, a video I should show you, which would demonstrate this to you. Yeah. This one is a dramatic monkey. Look at focus of the eyes. So the question how all these beautiful movements are controlled. First we should uh, have an overview of muscles taking part in the coordination of the eye movement. This one is anterior view of the right orbit, revealing some things what we, we, we would see uh, in the cadaver, uh, things what you expect from knowing the skull. At the lateral edge of the orbit was the fuss of the lacrimal gland, therefore this is the lacrimal gland we have already discussed. Medially, uh, between the roof and the medial wall, there was a small notch what you've learned in the first semester, that was a trochlear notch. Uh, other things which are to be dealt with in detail are the fasciae of the orbit, outermost of which is the periorbital, as well as there is a huge amount of fat in which the eye could be moved freely, and this one is the orbital fat pad, working as a socket for this so-called joint or should be simplified as a joint between the eye and the fat pad. Uh, here are the muscles inserting to uh, the sclera of the eye. Uh, there are uh, straight muscles and there are oblique muscles. Uh, the medial rectus and the lateral rectus on the opposite sides of the eye and superior and inferior rectus muscles. In addition to that there is one between the roof and the medial wall coming anteriorly and the tendon of it turns over the trochlea, sitting in the trochlear notch, and therefore bends and therefore that changes the direction of the pulling movement of the muscle. That one is the superior oblique muscle and completely corresponding to the direction of the tendon of this muscle but below the eye is the other oblique muscle, which is the obliquus inferior muscle. Obliquus bulbi inferior would be the proper name, but not always we say bulbi, but you should mean it. Now the question is, this muscle above the superior rectus muscle, and this muscle should be new for you. Now all these muscles, extraocular eye muscles, come from a common tendon, which uh, is a ring-like, strengthening of dense collagenous connective tissue surrounding partly the uh, superior orbital fissure as well as the optic canal. So therefore this one is optic nerve, that is the olfactory artery you expect to be here. And the structures passing through this common tendinous ring are nerves innervating uh, these muscles. But first the muscles are to be listed, the superior rectus, the medial, inferior, uh, lateral rectus muscle, plus here you can see the superior oblique muscle as well. Uh, the nerves uh, which are uh, tending towards the superior orbital fissure, and you've learned in the first semester, some of them uh, go through this ring and some of them outside the ring go. Uh, the uh, first and second uh, branches of the uh, ophthalmic nerve go outside the ring into the orbit. Uh, the uh, necessary nerve is in involved in this uh, fibrous ring, as well as the eye-moving uh, nerves should be. The only nerve which is excluded from the ring is the abducent nerve because it soon should uh, go laterally to innervate the lateral rectus muscle. But the two divisions of the oculomotor plus the trochlear should also go through the ring. Uh, this muscle again is a question mark and that is revealed here 
lying above the superior rectus muscle is the one which lifts the superior eyelid and that is the levator palpebris superioris muscle. For the same structures, what were listed here should be recognized on this uh, more detailed drawing, the lacrimal frontal outside the fibrous ring and the nasociliary inside, plus the eye moving uh, nerves, superior inferior divisions of oculomotor plus the abducens, and uh, this one is a trochlear nerve. Uh, the inferior oblique muscle was not demonstrated because it should uh, not be involved in the muscles originating from the common fibrous ring. This inferior oblique sometimes uh, uh, causes difficulty for students on the exam because they tend to forget that the only way to show this muscle is by lifting this huge muscle, the orbicularis oculi muscle, up and underneath of it or beneath of it, uh, the muscle is to be recognized following the direction of the tendon of the superior oblique muscle. So that is the inferior oblique. Uh, all these muscles insert into the sclera and uh, to determine the function or to understand the function of an individual muscle, you must always keep in mind into which uh, 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 octants or quadrants of the sclera the particular muscle inserts to. Now let's uh, go and uh, analyze the action of these movements. But first I want to show you how nicely uh, uh, these muscles could be seen on MRI pictures. Uh, in the horizontal uh, plane, the medial rectus lateral rectus muscle is easily visible. Uh, let me uh, draw your attention to this beautiful structure which uh, has been uh, discussed uh, uh, with the blood supply of the brain. This one is uh, the petrosal part of internal carotid and that is the cavernous part of internal carotid artery being asymmetrical on the sides. On the frontal uh, slice you can recognize the four rectus muscles together with the superior oblique muscle. In the middle of everything was the optic nerve visible and the white thing is the fat pad of the orbit. And this one is a sagittal uh, slice, uh, a picture in which the superior and inferior rectus are clearly uh, recognizable. This one is a real uh, preparation. I hope you've heard of a visible human. He was uh, <coughs> someone who was sent sentenced to death and was sliced into very thin slices. And in horizontal cut, uh, the medial and lateral rectus muscles are clearly recognizable. Now let's see uh, the movements of the eye. First, the uh, terminology is to be cleared. I, I the uh, eye could be lifted, and that is called the elevation, or depressed, uh, move down, that is called depression. But all the medial movement of the medial shift of the eye is called adduction, especially if you consider both eyes together. And the opposite movement, the lateral uh, shift of the eye, is called the abduction of the eye. Also, uh, there are rotatory movements of the eye, which are hardly recognizable in humans, but in animals having vertical or asymmetrical pupil, someone can see uh, they move this rotatory movement either outward or inward rotation of the eye if the animal is lying on the side and then the eye turns to the opposite direction as the head was lying down. So the rotations are lateral and medial rotation uh, for, for the uh, name, naming of the uh, proper name of the rotation you should consider a point above the pupil which direction does it move. If it moves inward, that is medial, and if opposite, that is lateral rotation. Always you should keep in mind that uh, the axis of the orbit does not fit with the axis of the eye or axis of the vision. vision. Uh, this 23 degrees divergence is to be kept in mind when you analyze the movements. Uh, there are several ways of memorizing these things. Uh, one is uh, going individually through different muscles, what a muscle can do according to uh, horizontal shift or rotation or elevation depression. 
Uh, this one is the right eye from above. According to that, this one is the media rectus muscle. And the media can only adduct, nothing else. It can do in horizontal plane, can make the adduction. And the uh, uh, opposite side of the eye lies the lateral rectus. Since to the anterior uh, uh, quadrant of the sclera it inserts, therefore does the opposite uh, movement, so it abducts the eye. The superior rectus is uh, very tricky according to the orientation. So the superior rectus from medial arises to the superior quadrant of the eye. Therefore it can, it can not only elevate, since it is superior, can make the elevation, but also pulls the anterior half of the eye inward. It means that one is uh, called the adduction, as well as medially turns the anterior uh, quadrant and that results in the medial rotation of the eye. Opposite function, almost opposite function, the uh, inferior rectus has got because of its direction but being below the eye, it can depress, pull down the anterior quadrant of the eye, it can make a depression. Also adduction it is made because the or, or same orientation related to the axis of the eye, axis of the, the, of the, of the, of the vision. Uh, but because it is below, therefore opposite kind of rotation it can do. Lower half is turned medially, therefore all the eye rotates laterally. The superior oblique is a tricky muscle, uh, since between the roof and the medial wall the muscle is not oriented, but the tendon bends uh, through the trochlea, therefore this bent tendon is the one which determines the function. The tendon inserts to the superior lateral posterior octant of the sclera of the eye, and therefore this is the thing to be pulled anteriorly and medially. And the final result of this is abduction of the eye, since the posterior half is pulled medially. The other thing is this posterior superior half pulled medially and anteriorly, that makes medial rotation of the eye. And finally, because the upper part is moved to, to the front anteriorly, therefore the result is depression of the eye. The inferior oblique, I told you several times that muscle corresponds completely to the, uh, the orientation of the tendon of the superior oblique, therefore uh, there are similar functions and there are uh, opposite functions of the two muscles. Since on the lower half of the eye it reaches the sclera, therefore it makes the elevation. Pulling this anteriorly elevates the eye. Uh, the abduction is the same as for the superior horizontal because the lateral part is pulled medially. This one is, results in uh, abduction of the eye, as well as makes lateral rotation, which is of course, due to orientation and position of the muscle, should be opposite to that rotatory function of the superior oblique muscle. The superior rectus muscle, which has been discussed here, you should uh, 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 keep in mind that uh, in addition to the abduction of the eye, when the uh, eye is uh, abducted by 23 degrees, so this is the divergence of the axis of the orbit, after this uh, the muscle, when it further uh, becomes short, it continues the abduction from the lateral. But the superior uh, oblique muscle, again, uh, it makes the abduction when the uh, eye is normally positioned, but when it is by the medial rectus, pulled medially by 50 degrees, then the opposite action it, ha it has got, it makes the further abduction of the eye. Now, uh, the, summarizing uh, different uh, uh, functions of the muscles, Again, the right eye is seen here, also the innervation of these muscles uh, indicated on the right side. So keep in mind that abducent only innervates one and the trochlear only innervates one. The abducent for the lateral rectus, the trochlear for the superior oblique, and all the rest of the extraocular muscles are under control of the oculomotor nerve. So let's see the functions. Uh, there are antagonists and synergists to each other. 
lateral rectus medial rectus necessarily being opposite side of the eye are antagonists to each other. Uh, superior inferior rectus again being opposite above and below the eye uh, make the opposite uh, function elevation and depression and the superior inferior oblique muscles some respects these are antagonists like depression is the function of superior elevation function of inferior oblique but in other respects these are synergists both of these last mentioned muscles make abduction together with the lateral rectus as well as secondary action of these muscles if, it is, if they, are, they are considered then the superior rectus inferior rectus both make abduction of the eye uh, elevation that the superior rectus and inferior oblique uh, is able to do and the depression is function of inferior rectus together with the superior oblique muscle. Uh, further going in, in, in analysis, the medial rotation is the function of superior rectus and the superior oblique. So of course I don't want you to memorize these things now, but if you study, you should use these methods to study. Uh, there are people who, uh, whose brain works on different way, so this is another way of learning the function of muscles. Uh, arrows indicate uh, by different colors the primary and secondary action of certain movements. Uh, looking at eyes uh, from in front, that one of course the right and this one is the left eye, and just picking up one muscle, inferior rectus muscle primarily makes depression Secondary function is the adduction of it, and the tertiary action is the lateral rotation of the eye. And going step by step through all these, uh, one can uh, understand the function of different muscles. Uh, the muscle, the, the eyes, uh, should move together because uh, the visual field should be projected to the uh, so this is the points of the visual field to project it to the identical points of the two retinae, left and right retinae, and that is the conjugated gaze, the conjugated eye movements, so together they should move. Let's see, when <coughs> someone looks at the right, then of course the right lateral rectus should work together with the left medial rectus muscle, looking upwards, so elevation of the, of the gaze, uh, it requires function of superior rectus muscles on both sides plus the inferior oblique muscles on both sides should uh, result in this uh, elevation of the eye. Uh, the opposite direction when you look at the inferior uh, 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 gaze uh, requires the movement of inferior rectus together with the superior oblique on both sides. And there is one uh, important movement uh, needed for the close accommodation when you read something, uh, then the two eyes should converge, and there is a convergence, and this is when the two media rectus together should move, but extremely precisely, of course. The innervation, as was uh, mentioned before, but now the uh, drawing shows uh, the position of these nerves within the orbit, so this is the trochlear nerve reaching the superior leg oblique muscle and the uh, abducent is the one which innervates the lateral rectus muscle. This lateral rectus is only seen here and the reflected portion of it, how the, the, the abducent goes into, seen behind. And all the rest of the muscles innervated by the oculomotor nerve. The list is here, but we did that before. The oculomotor pauses. So to understand the function of the uh, of these muscles, uh, the important thing is the missing functions of the nerves innervating different muscles. When the oculomotor nerve is knocked out, so on the right side, so this is called the right complete oculomotor palsy. One uh, thing which uh, first time has been mentioned today is uh, the 
paralysis of the ventral palpebrae superioris muscle, and the result is the uh, eyelid hanging down. So the patient is not able to open wide the eye uh, of the involved side. This is called a ptosis. Uh, the other uh, the symptom or sign, the uh, involved eyes, our eye is depressed and abducted. So here you can see the right eye is depressed and uh, gazed to the uh, side depression. And this is due to the uh, uh, improper work or the paralysis of the superior rectus muscle and the superior oblique muscle and the lateral rectus together. An additional sign of this palsy, because the <coughs> oculomotor is the one which carries uh, parasympathetic uh, fibers to the sphincter pupillae muscle. Therefore, uh, the, due to the absence of this function, therefore the pupil on the involved side, side uh, uh, is dilated, and the, the result, the uh, result of this. Uh, incoordinated movements of the two eyes, so they are not moving together, therefore there is a double visual field, uh, double vision in the cortex, because not identical points the surrounding projects onto in the two retinae. Uh, the final result is that the patient looks away from the region, the, the region. So the region is on the right side of the patient, looks away from that side. Uh, the partial region, when only the dilated pupil is the sign, and this uh, indicates the selective damage of the nucleus responsible for the parasympathetic innervation of the, uh, of the sphincter pupillae muscle, and the uh, nucleus is the accessory nucleus of oculomotor nerve or the Edinger Westphal nucleus. The right trochlear nerve palsy, because in this case, uh, the uh, superior oblique muscle cannot work, uh, therefore uh, the depression is uh, uh, less uh, effective, so reduced depression is one of the sides, and the other, the abduction uh, is hard to, to be done. Uh, the trouble when moving downstairs, so the patients in this case cannot look uh, in, in, in the lower visual field, cannot see anything in the lower visual field because of lack of, of depression of the eye on this uh, side. In this case, the patient looks at the, at the side of the lesion. Of the, lesion. Uh, the abducent nerve, so the abducent responsible for the innervation of lateral rectus, if uh, the right abducent nerve uh, is, is, uh, is knocked out. In this case, there is no abduction on that side. And uh, again, the uh, double visual field or double visual sensation results in diplopia, double vision. Uh, the uh, coordination of the eye movements, uh, what are the centers, what are the pathways of, uh, of this function? On the right side of the drawing, you can see a list of involved nuclei plus the executing nuclei on the right side. So these are the uh, eye muscle moving nuclei, the oculomotor, the uh, trochlear and the abducent nuclei. And these are the pre-coordinator uh, centers for the coordinated eye movements. Out of them, the most important is the paramedian pontine reticular formation, PPRF. And this one should be considered as a horizontal gaze center in the pons, pontine horizontal gaze center. Uh, for the coordination, the most important tract is this one, the medial longitudinal fasciculus, uh, which makes connections between these nucleus and the, uh, the eye-moving nuclei. That is a wiring diagram uh, showing the supranuclear innervation of these eye-moving uh, muscle nuclei. This one is oculomotor, this one is trochlear, this one is adducent. And uh, from the nuclei of the medial longitudinal fascicle, uh, there are uh, info, there is information coming down to the pons, and from the pons, the ipsilateral abducent nucleus receives innervation from where another 
over the neuron is the one which crosses the midline, the axon of it crosses the midline and innervates the uh, trochlear and ocular motor nucleus of the opposite side, the contralateral side. Uh, all these movements are uh, under control of the cerebral cortex, of course. Two centers exist, and two centers we know uh, being responsible for this uh, initiation of coordinated eye movements. One is the Broadman area of eight, and that one is located at the uh, posterior parts of superior and middle frontal gyri. And here, uh, the order for the voluntary saccadic movement, so the searching movement in the visual field, is, is uh, coordinated by pathways going down to, down to superior colliculus of the midbrain, the pretectal area between midbrain and the, and the diencephalon, as well as going down to this horizontal gaze center of the pons. Uh, the other center, when uh, for the pursuit eye movement, uh, for the saccadic eye movement, uh, someone recognizes something interesting, then it can fix it. So it can very smoothly uh, follow the moving object in the visual field. And for that one, the foreign uh, occipital eye field is responsible, uh, numbered by seven by Broadman, Broadman seven area, and roughly corresponds in location to the superior parietal lobule. Uh, the uh, pulses, so when the, when the oculomotor nerve does not work well, uh, should be uh, analyzed for a while. Uh, at different levels of this system, uh, the damages cause different uh, symptoms, like uh, in case of the lesion of the right corticopontai, so the dead tract from the uh, eye field going down to the horizontal gaze center of the bones, if it is damaged on the right side, the result is that uh, the left lateral rectus muscle does not receive any order to contract, therefore it does not work, and therefore the left eye makes adduction. Simultaneously, because of the recrossing fibers from the abducent uh, nucleus to the medial longitudinal fascicle to the oculomotor nucleus, and that part which in a way is the medial rectus muscle is not working now, therefore the lateral rectus is the one which overcomes in function the medial rectus, which pulls the right eye to the uh, right, and that, uh, that uh, is the same as abduction of the right eye. In this case, the patient looks at the region on the right side the lesion is, and all the eyes are uh, directed to the right side. Uh, the oculomotor palsy, if uh, the right pontine gaze center, so the nucleus itself, is damaged due to bleeding or anything, quite different uh, results uh, this can cause. One is uh, because of the ipsilateral connection of abducent nucleus uh, is knocked out, so does not receive any order. Therefore, the lateral rectus on the right side does not work. The medial rectus overcomes and therefore pulls the right eye inward, and that results in abduction. As well as uh, the recrossing fibers in the medial longitudinal fascicle does not uh, give order to the oculomotor nerve, that part of it which innervates the medial rectus. Therefore, the left eye cannot be pulled inward. The lateral rectus pulls it outside. That results in ad abduction of this eye. Uh, the result is uh, the patient looks away from the region. The region is on the right side. Both eyes are directed uh, to the left. Uh, oculomotor palsy, uh, when uh, there is no connection between the uh, nuclei due to the lesion of the medial longitudinal fascicle, and that is called the internuclear ophthalmoplegia. Uh, the uh, symptoms are uh, because of the uh, uh, paralysis of the uh, left medial rectus muscle, therefore the left eye cannot adduct as, and the, but the, the, the other eye it does the adduction. So if you ask the patient to look at the right side, 
the left eye cannot do that. So there is no gaze to the right. Uh, pathways of convergence. Uh, for that one, we, we, we need the convergence of the eyes when uh, the close accommodation is required. I told you, uh, looking at uh, close distance, that is close accommodation. Uh, the Berlioz nucleus is the key figure in this, and this nucleus is nothing but uh, those parts of the oculomotor, both oculomotor nuclei, which are fairly close to the midline or even connected with each other, left and right, through the midline. And this is the part of the oculomotor nucleus which is responsible for innervation of the media rectus muscle. So how the accommodation is made? Uh, optic uh, information through the optic nerve uh, getting to the lateral geniculate body projecting up to the visual cortex. Visual cortex talks back to the pretectal area and from the pretectal area uh, these uh, common medial parts of the oculomotor uh, nucleus receive innervation and due to that both uh, medial rectus muscles together can pull very gently the eye towards each other resulting in adduction of the eye. Very important to keep in mind that consciousness is needed to analyze this reflex, this convergence when you ask the patient to look at a uh, finger getting closer and closer to the nose of, of his or her face then this convergence can only be uh, evoked if uh, the patient is conscious. So the cortex, the uh, uh, supply of the core function of the cortex is required. Centers for vertical eye movements. Uh, these are uh, not so well uh, recognized and localized uh, regions. Uh, hard to see them in the, uh, in the, in the macroscopy of the brain. These uh, include the pretectal area, as the name indicates, the pretectal area is in front of the superior, it's a rostral to the superior colliculi, it is at the border of the diencephalon and the mesencephalon, and this is the vertical upward gaze center. Uh, the other important is the downward directed eye movement, the, 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 the gaze downwards, the downwards gaze center, which is a rostral interstitial nucleus of media longitudinal fascicle. This one is uh, not seen here. And uh, for the rotation of the eye, uh, the in new interstitial nucleus of Cajal, uh, also somewhere here but more rostral uh, located, plus this nucleus next to uh, the uh, beginning of the cerebral aqueduct, and this is called the Darkshevich nucleus, nucleus of Godarshevit. So this one is responsible for the coordinated rotation of the two eyes. The pupillary light reflex also requires explanation at this point. Uh, you know the reflex is when the light uh, enters the eye, then the pupil on the side, side of this investigation gets, nar gets, gets narrowed. But uh, there is a consensual pupillary light reflex when letting eye into one eye results in constriction of the pupil on both sides. And for that one, this pathway uh, is important to be mentioned. The uh, edinger westphal nuclei are the ones which uh, send parasympathetic preganglionic fibers uh, through the oculomotor nerve to the ciliary ganglion located in the orbit, and uh, postganglion fibers through posterior long ciliary nerves, they enter the synterpupillary muscle. So this is the efferent, uh, uh, efferent part of the reflex loop, but the afferentation comes from the retina and the optic fibers uh, going either ipsilateral or uh, contralateral side of, uh, of the brainstem, they end, terminate, or at least collaterals terminate in lateral geniculate bodies and collaterals leaves the pretectal area and the pretectal area innervates adding a nuclei on both sides. The crossing of the fibers happens in the posterior commissure and that is almost the only thing you should know about the function of posterior commissure. So if bleeding happens here at the pretectal area, posterior commissure, then the 
the reflex from one side cannot uh, result in uh, constriction of the pupil of the other eye. As you can see, fibers going up to the cortex are not involved in the uh, reflex, and therefore in unconscious patient, the reflex can be evoked, can be investigated. The, uh, just for the completion of the story, uh, the dilator, dilatator pupillae muscle is under control of sympathetic innervation. And uh, from predictal area or from other visual centers, information enters lateral home of uh, the lower cervical upper thoracic uh, region of the spinal cord. And here uh, the preganglionic sympathetic fibers are situated, uh, we call this part of the lateral horn, the spinal center. And from here the preganglion fibers through spinal nerves reach the sympathetic trunk and go up to the superior cervical ganglion where they synapse and the postganglion fibers enter ciliary ganglion but they do not do anything there, just travel through and through ciliary nerves they go to innervate the dilator of the pupil or dilator pupillae muscle. Okay, this is just uh, some delicate thing for those who want more. More complexity is shown on, uh, on, on these two pictures, but these are, of course, not to be memorized. Thank you for your attention.